So my name is Michael Lee Smith, I'm the Customer and Colleague for Education Specialist for the Yorkshire and Clydesdale Bank and my role is actually very simple. I tour around the country speaking to anybody that listens to me about fraud and the threat it poses to individuals like you and me and also businesses as well with the sole ambition to raise awareness that fraud is a real threat and it's something that we all need to try and make, pay more attention to. I'm Detective Sergeant uh, King from the Cleveland Police Economic Crime Unit based at Middlesbrough. Um, money mulling is typically where uh, someone's recruited uh, to process or receive the proceeds of crime and send them onwards. If you think about it in terms of drug mulling, where drug mules pay to move uh, drugs across a border, a money mule is someone who's often paid to move money through financial borders uh, or through the banking system, often uh, as a result of drugs, fraud, uh, potentially human trafficking and potentially arms trafficking as well. Money mulling works uh, on the basis that you surrender your banking credentials, online passwords, sometimes bank card and PIN number. Uh, you are paid or offered a payment, sometimes you don't receive anything, to receive that money. And then when you receive that money, either the criminal will process the onward payment to a different bank account um, so that they can then what we call cash out, um, or they will ask you to do it. So in case the bank steps in and conducts security checks, you will then be expected to confirm with the bank that you're with that actually that transaction is genuine and that you did expect to receive the payment and that you do want to send it elsewhere. A money mule, quite simply, is somebody who allows their bank account to be used to transfer money that's been obtained illegally, normally abroad, and then they take a cut of that money. In essence, they then would commit money laundering. Uh, money mules can be recruited in a number of different ways. Uh, the most common, by far the most common way we see this happen is through social media platforms. Uh, you'll see uh, images of people with Rolex watches, um, with big blocks of cash, uh, bank account cards laid out on tables. Um, all of this is designed to entice you into a scheme where you potentially can get rich quick too. Uh, the offers and what you might be received in terms of getting involved in these types of crime or this type of uh, scam could range anything from 50 quid to a couple of hundred pounds, but often you receive nothing. Um, the recruitment platform or platforms used to recruit, such as Instagram, they're very alluring, they're very enticing, and it feels like there's no risk involved at all. There is significant risks, and these people, they may look friendly, it may feel like you're just speaking or dealing with a cheeky chappy. It's not the case at all. They're highly organized and sophisticated criminals. If you caught mulling from a police perspective, uh, you could find yourself getting arrested, you could find yourself having your house searched, you could find yourself being charged to court, and you could be faced with a 14-year prison sentence. Uh, this, this is a crime. Often the victims realise they are subject to such a crime or they're transferring money, they believe they are working. And we do deal with in the police service a lot of vulnerable victims. Obviously these jobs that are advertised for quick cash, earn money quick, can have a significant effect in the future for anybody who engages in this type of uh, behaviour. For instance, if you receive a conviction for money laundering, that's going to affect your future prospects in a job because you will have it on your uh, record that you have offences for fraud, in particular money laundering. It may prevent you travelling abroad, in particular America, if you have an offence of money laundering. But locally, and what will impact on you on a daily basis, you may have trouble getting credit. You may have a problem getting student loans in the future, uh, when in fact you were probably thought it was an innocent you thought you were working for someone when in fact you're committing uh, money laundering in itself. What we tend to do from the police point of view, we look at each job and take it on its own merits. Uh, and what I mean by that, we often turn up at people's houses and find out that they've transferred money illegally uh, and they are a, in fact a victim. We will speak to them and offer help and guidance and even though they may have committed offence, depending on their vulnerability and, and what's happened and their knowledge of what's happened. We do often issue what they call a cease and desist notice. We explain what they've done, they've committed money laundering, that it is a criminal offence, but we are aware that you had no knowledge and you thought you were working for someone. And we issue these notices to, to people who do this. And as a result, uh, it hopefully explains to them that they can't do this anymore and stops it. And they don't get a criminal conviction 
uh, because we're not here to criminalise students or people uh, who have no knowledge and we will work with them. However, if they continue to commit this offence and they go on and do it again, because of the cease and desist notices that the police issue to, to this, for this type of behaviour, if they go on and do it again, there's no excuse when they do it again and then they would be prosecuted for money laundering. Um, money mules typically uh, only get away with it once. Um, as soon as the payment's received into uh, someone's account that's decided to go along with these sorts of schemes, the other bank where the victim normally is tells our, us um, at the receiving bank that the money that's come in is fraud. So the first payment is normally the last payment you receive. The consequences of such are, in most cases, we will shut the bank account immediately. Uh, meaning any direct debits, any regular payments going in or out of the account, you won't be able to complete anymore. The card will stop working. Um, but onward from that, you, risk, you run the risk of a criminal record, um, but as well, your credit file can be significantly damaged. Um, say, for instance, you were a money mule today, you may decide that you want to renew your mobile phone contract in a month's time. The precautions and uh, measures that we put in place might prevent you from doing that. Uh, this can affect things from insurance for cars, home insurance, mortgages in the future, as well as your actual ability to open up a bank account elsewhere. Um, and nowadays, you need, you need to be able to have a bank account in most circumstances to receive pay. The other impact you may, fee may um, suffer as a result of this as well is some of the fraud prevention loadings we use, employers check for. So when you go to apply for a job, they may run a credit check. And on that credit check, um, it's almost like a big red button. It doesn't look like this, but a big red button will appear saying, you committed fraud. Um, and to any employer using those types of checks, they're obviously going to pay a lot of attention to that and place quite a lot of value on the fact that you might have been involved in fraud and it could potentially limit your career possibilities or opportunities in the future. In order to protect yourself uh, from becoming a victim of this type of scam, I have five points that uh, I would advise people to think uh, and the first one, keep control. Never ever give your bank details to anybody unless you trust them completely. Never give your PIN number to anybody at all. Uh, this is something that we find uh, happens regularly, in particular with students. Uh, statistics show that something like 14% of students will share their bank details with other people. This gives people access to your account. So not just for money mulling, I would advise never ever provide details of your bank account to anybody. Money, money for nothing. Be extremely careful about people offering you easy money. Uh, this is how criminals will, will hook you into taking part in such things as money mulling and laundering their money. Uh, that is quite clearly stolen or is, is, is illegal and come from whatever scam uh, that they've uh, obtained that money to pass through your accounts. So if you think you can earn a quick buck, think twice about it. Tell somebody you trust is point three. Tell your parents, a friend, a colleague or your tutor. If you're dealing uh, uh, and transferring money and you have concerns, speak to these people it may stop you becoming a victim of this fraud and also committing a criminal offence. Take time to think. If you, if you use your bank account and you were earning money as a result of it, you're potentially committing a serious crime. Ask yourself the question, is it worth it? Is it worth this quick amount of 50 quid that you might earn for transferring 500 quid? Because it could have a massive impact on you in the future. Too good to be true, the final one. If it sounds good to, too good to be true, it probably is. And it probably is a scam. People do not give you anything for nothing. So don't be fooled by this campaign. Money mules, we've seen a massive rise in money mules, particularly in the student uh, area and uh, migrants. If you've got any worries or any concerns, look up moneymules.co.uk on the internet. It will provide you with further information or action fraud. If you put that in on the internet, it will give you all information about money mules. Uh, but remember, if somebody offers you a job and it sounds too good to be true for quick cash, it probably is a scam 
and you're probably going to commit a serious crime. Don't be fooled.